Welcome back. This is the Big Ideas Theater at AARC Congress. I'm in Highland. I'm joined now by Lynn Geiger, who's uh, Alpha One advocate, national speaker. Thanks so much for coming by. Thank you for having me. Want to talk about uh, Alpha One. Give us some thoughts on, on how you are able to be an advocate for Alpha One. So um, uh, I'm an advocate for Alpha One, which is Alpha One antitrypsin deficiency. Um, Alpha One is an inherited protein deficiency that causes an imbalance in the proteins and enzymes in the lungs. And eventually it's that lack of that, that deficiency of the alpha-1 protein that allows an excess of a very powerful enzyme called neutrophil elastase to start doing what it's not supposed to do. It's supposed to be cleaning the lungs. And instead, if you don't have enough alpha-1 protein, it starts destroying lung tissue. So eventually it starts breaking down the alveolar walls and it causes emphysema. So alpha-1 is uh, genetic emphysema or sometimes called inherited COPD. So how did you get involved? Well, oh, that's kind of a long story. Um, I was, I became uh, ill in my late 20s and early 30s. I started having really serious chest infections very frequently and was going to urgent care centers over and over again and finally went to a primary care physician who at that time misdiagnosed me, unfortunately, with uh, what she called uh, exercise-induced asthma and was treating me for that. Uh, unfortunately, it was not the right diagnosis and I continued to decline. Within a year, I became so ill, I had to go back to her office and say, tell her, this is not asthma, it's something else. And I asked her, seriously, would you test me for everything you can possibly think of? And the very last thing she tested me for was alpha-1. But she did test me, which is the most important part. Uh, so I was given a diagnosis of alpha-1. Uh, we started doing uh, breathing tests to find out what was going on with me. At, at that time, we found out that I had, I had an FED1 of 38% of predicted. So I'd lost more than 60% of my lung function at, at, at 35 years old. Um, I started on IV therapy, which slowed the progress of the disease but didn't stop it. I became very involved with the Alpha One community at that point. Uh, I started volunteering in the community uh, as a volunteer with the, the support groups and eventually became a support group leader. Uh, I volunteered with the Alpha One Foundation and the wonderful late John Walsh and the work that he was doing. We were very, very close and I miss him so terribly. Uh, but I was, I was limited in the amount of work that I could do because I was becoming more and more ill and I couldn't travel as much as I used to. And This all ended up uh, coming down to a, a situation in 2002 where I had about 15% of my lung function left and was dying. And luckily I got a telephone call from the University of Virginia to come in and get my lung transplant. So I had a bilateral lung transplant in 2002 and it was very, very successful. And what that enabled me to do was start traveling again and start doing more serious volunteer work. And eventually it led to the opportunity for me to do this professionally on a full-time basis, travel the country and educate groups of physicians and respiratory therapists and nurse practitioners on the importance of testing for Alpha-1 to raise their awareness level of Alpha-1, to increase their detection of Alpha-1 and then urge very aggressive treatment in the appropriate patient. Because until there's a cure, that's the best thing we've got. From your experience, uh, is Alpha-1 routinely included in the testing, or does it usually take some prodding and time, which is valuable when it comes to diagnosis? It, it unfortunately is very far back in the, in the normal process of testing for lung disease. It should be at the very front, and it's, it's the very last, or much worse than that. Is it that prevalent? It's, 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 it, we believe that there are somewhere between 100 and 100, excuse me, between 100 and 300,000 people who are affected by Alpha-1 right now in the U.S., yet we've diagnosed less than 10% of them, which we think is primarily a lack of awareness of this and, and why you should be, who, who you should test, what is, what is this targeted population that we should be looking at and, and screening these people. And actually some, some guidelines came out starting in 2003 and they're still not really being followed. And we have a, a lot of people who just don't test for Alpha-1 for whatever reason it is that, that they have in their mind. So. The ones who do test the most find the most patients. Interesting. Well, some thoughts, some final thoughts, if you would, on, on kind of where would you like to see this go? Obviously, uh, awareness is, is the key factor, but uh, sort of a how do, you, how do you continue to shout it from the rooftops? How do you get others involved, uh, even if they don't have the personal side of it, from the professional side of, of making sure that that group of patients that aren't getting tested do get the test? Well, within the respiratory therapy community, I, th I think it's really important for every RT to understand that they have this ability. 
that they have the ability to have a profoundly positive impact on this population of undiagnosed alpha-1 patients. Now, whether that's through direct contact and actually testing the patient themselves, which is an easy finger stick test, so it's, it's, it's no big deal, uh, or a conversation with a colleague and, and, and raising their awareness level of alpha-1 and the need to, to test, or maybe an elbow to a doctor to say, hey, you're about to miss somebody, or maybe even something more profound, like helping to develop uh, a protocol for testing for alpha-1, maybe within a PFT lab or a pulmonary uh, rehabilitation center or things like that. There's, there's so much that the respiratory therapy community can be involved in. Well, hopefully they will continue uh, to, uh, or at least begin to get a little more involved. Perhaps there's a web page, something you could plug? Uh, that uh, would I, would, I would go to alpha1.org. That's the Alpha-1 Foundation the website. They've got tons of information, everything you would need to know about Alpha-1. Fantastic. Len, thank you so much for coming by and joining us. This is the Big Ideas Theater. This is the ARC Congress.